Good morning. My name is Denny Steckline, uh, General Manager of the Fair. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2014 State Fair. Um, we're very, very excited to, uh, to get this underway and officially in about 43 minutes. So we know uh, we would like to get you to the brand new Lair White House, and I know a lot of you would like to get there for the opening ceremony. Uh, but we want to just go through a few things this morning with you uh, to get you prompted and, and, and ready for the 2014 State Fair. Uh, before I get into too much, uh, some quick introductions. Uh, we've got some folks that have put a lot of effort into this event and uh, that you work very closely with. Um, from Gretemann Group, Rachel Greeny and Jordan Bradbury. They were right here and now they're not, so they're, they're in the back. There they are. They will be the faces of the publicity office uh, when you visit the fair. Uh, the fair's assistant manager, Lori Hart, who's back there with them. And then uh, the members of the fair board who have joined us this morning. Uh, Ron Henriksen, the fair board president from Westmoreland. Uh, Daryl Buholz, uh, director of extension designee from Manhattan. Angie Clark from Garden City. Uh, Jeff Deeds from Goodland. I don't know if Jeff, I didn't see Jeff come in, but Jeff got here from Goodland. Harmon Bliss from Jetmore. Sue Schlapp representing the uh, Secretary of Commerce. Monica Lair from Pickway. Secretary Jackie McClaskey from the Department of Agriculture. Brad Rail from Hutchinson. Abby Amick from Alma. Cindy O'Neill from Lawrence. And Tom Tunnel from Topeka. So I'm glad that they were able to join us this morning. We've been shifting them from one stop to the next and there's food at every stop, so they're still at a good point. Some other uh, quick introductions um, that we would uh, like to give you some time perhaps at the end if, if it allows to visit with these folks about what they do. Um, in the yellow t-shirt over here, the Get On Stick t-shirt, Janet Halford. Janet oversees our Scholastic Press Corps program. This is an, an eight-year-old program that offers a hands-on experience to high school journalism, uh, print and video journalism students. Uh, Monday through Friday of the fair it has grown by leaps and bounds. Janet has done tremendous work with that, and uh, Janet will be around uh, for the duration so you can visit with her. Uh, Richard Renner, or High Pockets, one of our featured free entertainers. <laughs> Richard joining us once again this year. Yeah. <laughs> Ask Richard about his, his costumes. We'll let him, him tell you that story. And we've got a couple of other guests that uh, we're going to bring up here and let them make a few comments to you in just a couple of minutes. So I'll introduce them at that time. As I mentioned, we'll have the opening ceremony at 11 o'clock at the Lair White House. The Lair White House was the vision of the Kansas Fairgrounds Foundation. And uh, if you have not seen it, we know you are going to be so impressed with what the foundation has accomplished with that. For many, many years, there was a small white house, a little residence that was there uh, that at one time the Fairgrounds caretaker lived in. We moved the caretaker out about 10 years ago. And uh, so we wanted some flexibility with that real estate that if, if we could ever achieve something like this, uh, with what the foundation has done, uh, it could become a reality. And something that's an added, uh, that has not been available in the past is now the general public will have access to the first floor of this venue for a brand new State Fair Museum. Uh, last year, if you recall, was our 100th birthday. So we have 100 years of history to share with, with Kansans. And uh, so on the first floor of that venue, and after the opening ceremony, it will open and you'll be among the first to have a sneak peek at uh, this year's display and exhibit within the museum. This year it focuses on, or the theme of it is the year of the clown. Many of you remember Bardo the Clown, who was a part of the fairgrounds for about 70 years, who passed away January of 2013. And so the exhibit this year uh, is dedicated to Bardo and focuses on all of his accomplishments uh, throughout his life. Another, uh, free attraction we had this year that uh, we think is going to get a lot of interest and we put it on Facebook and had some great comments to that is the Daredevil High Dive Show. Uh, it's been 13 years since we've had a high dive show. 
uh, or divers on a stick as we refer to them in the office. But uh, an 80 foot tower uh, diving into a pool that's no, no deeper than 10 feet. So uh, we think that's gonna be an amazing attraction, three shows a day throughout the fair. As you know, tomorrow is going to be uh, a very exciting day on the fairgrounds with a couple of debates, the gubernatorial debate at 10, the senatorial debate at 11. Uh, we know there's going to be extensive media coverage of those and a great way to start off a Saturday at the fair. A couple of new events we have on the second weekend. The second Saturday morning, Saturday the 13th, we're doing the Metal Arc Mile. Uh, this is at 9 a.m. It is a fun run walk that will allow those who participate to basically make a lap of the fairgrounds a mile long. Along that route, they'll stop at a few places. They'll get a stop at the midway and try to shoot a free throw. They'll get a stop at the big slide and go up the steps and slide down the slide. Then they'll end in Gottschalk Park, uh, the same location where the high dive is. And we'll give out prizes to those who participated and have some drawings. Um, not a competitive event, just something for people to get out, have some fun, get a little exercise, and uh, get warmed up for a great day at the fair. That night at Lake Talbot, uh, another new event we call Movie Night at the Fair. We will be showing Disney's Frozen on a big screen that will be placed in front of the stage at Lake Talbot. So an outdoor movie uh, during the fair and a lot of excitement surrounding that one as well. A couple of uh, other items, and uh, this, these are a couple of other guests that I wanna introduce. Um, on Tuesday night during the fair, we're going to have a performer who we are hosting a young lady who traveled from Mays, Kansas, all the way to the bright lights of the stage on NBC's The Voice. And at this time, I'd like to introduce to you Miss Kaylee Glanton and let her make a few comments to you. Kaylee? Thank you. Hello. I'm good with singing in front of people, but when it comes to talking, it's a, little, it's a different story. But um, yeah, I'm uh, from Wichita, Kansas. I went to Mays High School. I graduated in uh, 2012. And uh, season six of The Voice, uh, season seven is about to start, so just last season, um, I uh, made it past the uh, blind audition, got all uh, four coaches to turn around, and I made it to the third round, um, which I'm actually very happy that I you know, even got to make it that far. Um, but um, after that experience, you know, now I've just been playing around and doing big shows, stuff like this that's, you know, it, it may not seem like huge big shows to some people, but I love it so much. And this is the type of places that I really enjoy playing at, um, just with people from my, you know, same town and uh, same state that I can relate with and uh, they can relate with me. Um, and also just to show people that, you know, somebody from Kansas can, you know, do something uh, big like that. But um, anyway, you know, now I'm just kind of working on writing a lot of music uh, to hopefully get an album out within the next half year of my own original music. Um, I did make a six track demo of my original music just at home to sell at the show on Tuesday. So if anybody um, wants to go and buy one of those. and um, But I will be staying after, after this gets done for a bit if anybody has any questions or anything like that. Uh, to ask me, then I would uh, be happy to answer that for you. But um, um, yeah, please come out on Tuesday. It'll be a great show uh, from six to seven. Uh, so hopefully I get to see all you guys there. So thanks for having me out, guys. So. Another new exhibit we're hosting this year, or uh, proud to, to be able to offer in conjunction with the Kansas Corporation Commission, is the Kansas Energy Expo, a new experience for our fairgoers to be educated and entertained and learn so much more about the energy industry within the state of Kansas. At this time, I'd like to introduce Jesse Bourjan from the Kansas Energy Office, the KCC. Jesse? Thank you, Denny. Good morning. Um, on behalf of the Kansas Corporation Commission, we are pleased to announce uh, the first ever Kansas Energy Expo. Uh, we have partnered with about 23 stakeholder groups 
um, and uh, will provide a focus on Can Kansas's energy resources. Uh, the Energy Expo will be at the Ad Astra Pavilion. Uh, it occupies about 14,000 square feet. Uh, in that space, we've divided uh, organized energy into five different sectors, oil and gas, transportation, renewable energy, energy efficiency, and utilities. And within each one of those sectors, uh, we'll have various interactive, hands-on experiences geared towards kids and adults uh, to learn about Kansas energy. Some of the other activities that will uh, be going on uh, with the Energy Expo, we will have various charging stations uh, on the fairgrounds where folks can charge their uh, mobile phones. Um, uh, one of those uh, charging stations is powered by a bicycle, so folks can get on the bicycle, the pedal to bike, uh, the energy is stored in a battery, and then they can plug their phone in and, and charge, uh, charge their phone. The other is, will be uh, charged with a solar panel. Um, we'll have an activity center where, where that will accommodate up to 25 students where they can build a wind, a wind turbine blade and, and uh, learn about renewable energy resources in the state. Uh, a scavenger hunt going on. We've also uh, partnered with the Kansas uh, Department of Commerce, Kansas Works, and we'll have uh, job listings available for each one of the sectors that uh, are there and folks can come and learn about jobs that are available and get information on that as well. So. We are uh, very excited to launch this, uh, the Kansas Energy Expo this year. We uh, partnered with the State Fair and about 23 stakeholder groups, so we hope that you would come out and uh, see what it's all about. Thank you. This was a project that started uh, probably about 18 months ago, and uh, it's, it's exciting to see it come to fruition. And uh, had a sneak preview this morning and went in, and it, it's pretty amazing. It, it's transformed, and, and Jesse said the Ad Astra Pavilion, which is not a new building, but a newly named building. Uh, some of you may remember it as the Old Beef Cattle Pavilion many, many years ago, and uh, been tremendously enhanced, and uh, you'll be very impressed when you see what's been done with it. So with that, um, we want to leave you some time to talk to these great folks that have come and joined us this morning with Jesse and Kaylee and Janet and Richard and uh, any of the others who are here this morning. Um, at about 1045, the trolley that you arrived on, your chariot, will be out front to take you to the opening ceremony. So you don't have to worry about rushing too quickly out of here to get over there. Um, but we appreciate uh, all you do for the fair and for taking the time to come join us this morning and today and, and throughout the next 10 days. Before you leave, make sure you connect with Lori. Um, she's got one more little goodie. Uh, for your goodie bag, um, a couple of uh, grandstand show tickets for you to enjoy uh, at the fair this year. So, again, thank you. We look forward to a great 2014 and uh, appreciate all you've done. Thank you.